So today we're going to be talking about God's health plan that's actually found in Scripture. Amen. <clears throat> and so the world has got caught up with science uh, from one perspective, test tube, if it's in a test tube, okay. But they've kind of negated God's word as it relates to health. In fact, 3 John 2 says, right there on the screen, Beloved, I wish above all things out not, that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosperous. So next to your salvation, God has your health at his heart because you can't serve him, serve one another, and present a, your body a living sacrifice unless you follow these 10 health laws. Amen? Amen? So with that, bow your heads, let's have prayer. Father, thank you for the grace you've extended to each of us this day for you woke us up. Thank you for traveling mercies getting here. And I pray that you will open hearts and open minds. Uh, be with Wilda as she speaks, as well as myself. And may we rightly represent you. And all receive a blessing and give all the glory and the honor to you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay? So in Scripture, before man was ever created, God put a health plan in place. And unfortunately, we as a people do not understand anatomy and physiology the way we should to understand how sunshine can protect your heart protect you against COVID. You know, <clears throat> those who succumbed to COVID, or so came, succumbed, succumbed. Yeah, I was right the first time. <laughs> All of, the majority of them, 98% of them had low vitamin D levels. Yeah. All right. Sunshine converts cholesterol into vitamin D. See, we don't understand God's health law. That's why we run and get that little pill that's void of life, expecting to get life. Now, I, I make no apologies if you're in the healthcare profession. Uh, you've been trained a certain way. Uh, but the majority of the people in the healthcare profession have not been trained God's way. And that's the difference. So with that... <clears throat> Does God have a health plan? Rick just answered that. He does. <laughs> and the greatest, the greatest health book ever written is actually the Bible. The Bible contains information on shipbuilding, on uh, economics. God just put everything in there, how we should live, how we should dress. It's all in his word. And it has so much health information. And, and the beauty of it is it's not general. Often it's very specific, especially as we approach the scriptures and say, Lord, this is your love letter to me. Help me to see what you have personally for me in there. So God's health plan has two parts. You put that in there, so I don't know. Just go. Trust me. <laughs> all righty. Part one. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. And part two, the Great Commission. We know that God gave the Great Commission to his disciples there in Matthew, the 28th chapter. And it tells us that he said, go into all the world and teach the gospel, making disciples of men, right? But there, there's also a second great commission that is found in Psalm 67, verse 2, as he wanted his disciples to go into all the world. Psalm 67, verse 2 tells us that he has a saving health that he wants to go into all the world. He said that thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience 
to the faith among all nations for his name, Romans 1, 4, and 5. So let's delve into what is God's health plan. God gave us instructions. Psalms 119.73 tells us, Thy hands have fashioned me and made me. Give me understanding that I shall keep thy commandments. So if God <clears throat> fashioned us and made us, who better knows how this human organism works? God, exactly. <clears throat> and we were watching a documentary by Dr. You know his last name? I'm sorry. And he was saying that back in 1960, 60%, science had proven 60% of Ellen White's health writings to be factual, true. He said in 2000, um, 2001, it was up to 87%. All of her health writings in uh, Ministry of Healing, Councils and Diets and Foods, etc., it's up to 87% now. And it's just going to keep getting higher and higher as man catches up with God. Thank you. And if I'm not mistaken, he actually said 97%. And he talked about what had been actually verified in the scientific literature. So <clears throat> it just keeps getting more beautiful and more beautiful. We can truly trust the word of God. It is way before its time, but we can trust in it. We're given the instruction that we are to search out the cause. I was a father to the poor and the cause which I knew not, I searched out. So it is for us to know God's health plan, to delve into it. We're also told that everything has a cause. It says the curse causeless shall not come. Proverbs 26, 20. So if you have diabetes, two, heart disease, you have to <clears throat> go back over God's health laws and see where you've uh, violated them and then make the nex necessary changes in your life instead of putting a Band-Aid over it, which is a prescription drug. And Rick often shares these when we come here. God's 10 doctors that make house calls. And we'll go into them some more. So, okay. <clears throat> so, once again, there are those 10 doctors. Earlier we showed where they were found in scripture. Uh, yeah, right, right here. Yeah. yeah, there they are. So if you want to take a picture or take notes, be like the Berean, and go back and study what God has to say about those 10 doctors. And we'll actually delve into quite a few more verses um, as we go along. Okay, so there they are once again. And I do call them doctors because that is what they do to, on the human body. So this is what uh, God has to say about them. Nature is God's physician. The pure air, glad sunshine, and beautiful flowers and trees the orchards and vineyards and outdoor exercise among, amid these surroundings are health giving the elixir of life. So when you incorporate <clears throat> all 10 of them, you know, scripture says if you offend in one point, amen. The same with the health principles or the health laws. People don't like that word law, but that's what they are. But, but the he 10 health principles, you can't keep just eight of them or nine of them. You have to be willing to do all 10 of them. All right. So this is what else the Lord has to say about his 10 doctors. The things of nature are God's blessing provided to give health to body, mind and soul. They are given to the well to keep them well, prevention, and to the sick to make them well, restoration. They are more effective in restoring health than all the drug medications in the world. And we know that for a fact. Just name one prescription drug that heals. So, yeah. So it boils down to right there, that top one right there. Do you really trust God with your life? I know we say we do. 
But when your life is really on the line, will you trust God in his 10 health laws? Or will you accept the chemo because you've been frightened into it? Tough questions. I've never been in that position. But I believe by God's grace that I will trust him. Okay. So there's further study, um, Exodus 15, 26. Romans 12, 1 and 2, and Revelation 21, verses 4 and 5, to study more about those 10 doctors. So, what should we do when disease comes upon us? In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained. So you have to look at those 10 doctors and figure out which one you're violating. Am I staying up to one, two o'clock in the morning? Or am I eating an hour before I go to bed? You know, these health principles are designed to have this uh, body in optimal condition. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Number two, unhealthful conditions should be changed. Number three, wrong habits corrected. And then look at number four, then. So until you do one, two, and three, you're not going to heal. Then nature is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to reestablish right conditions in the system. So we can spend the next hour talking about impurities, how the body is toxic. In fact, metabolic waste, the body produces itself. And we can spend another half a day talking about establishing right conditions or body chemistry. So that's the process when you get sick, God requires you to go through if you want his healing blessing. So we're gonna talk about <clears throat> these 10 doctors and present their therapeutic value and the application of God's health plan. All righty. The first law of health that we want to discuss is benevolence. Benevolence simply means kindly giving. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Let's look at a few more texts that speak to this, and we'll also see where God promises health if we will do this. The first one we want to look at is Isaiah 58. Here's a promise. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Is, not, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee the glory of the lord shall be thy re reward did you notice <clears throat> number three in in the process of overcoming health began with then you do those first three two or three number three said then here we have god say if you do all this then so God's promises are conditional. We have to do our part and God will fulfill his part. Okay. Uh, we did have a story that we usually put in here, but for sake of time, um, if we have time in one of the other sessions, we can share that story. Um, here's another good text. He promised a cup and running over if we, if, if we uh, partake in benevolence. Again, kindly giving. He said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Often we think of this in context of financial blessings, but blessings of healing is also included in that. God wants to get to bless us with good health, that we can do his will, that we can share his word with others. Let's jump on to Dr. Exercise. Okay. 
So another, uh, another principle is exercise. I would bring to your attention the fact that God himself gave physical activity to man as soon as sin entered. You can look at Genesis 3, verse 17 to 18. And he gave us this activity, one, to prevent idleness, to support health, <clears throat> to, to promote happiness and well-being. Consider the joy of useful labor. I remember when my son was 10 years old, I promised to give them um, a, a treat if they cleared a path of it was so many leaves strewn about the place. And I said, okay, this is your section. This is so-and-so's section. And I gave them each their section. And I said, well, you'll have a gift at the end of it once you've done it. And my son worked on it for three days. It was a lot of leaves. And cleared the whole thing and, went, and then went beyond even what I'd asked him to. And he was so excited about it. And I saw that joy of useful labor. I know you've experienced it yourself when you've gone above and beyond or when you thought you couldn't do it, but you put, applied yourself. God gave us that joy to complete a task, to appreciate rest more. Sorry. Absolutely. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you so much for that connection, Patty Jo. That is true. If we're not if we're not physical, we, we seize up. Because our, our ligaments, our joints, everything is meant to be in action. God made us that way. Uh, and we also appreciate rest more. If you got out there and raked all those leaves that were falling, you're going to have a good night's rest. <laughs> you're, and we also have a story about that. <laughs> all right. Um, here, here is Genesis 3, 17 and 19. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, cursed is the ground for thy sake. So he cursed the ground, but he told him it was for, his own, for Adam's sake. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So now we're going to talk about <clears throat> the therapeutic value and application of doctor exercise. I must walk today and tomorrow and the, third, and the following day. Uh, we find that in Luke 13.33. We know Jesus walked predominantly his entire life. <clears throat> exercise strengthens the bones, the ligaments, and uh, prevents osteoporosis. Exercise lowers resting heart rate so the heart doesn't have to work as hard. Exercise charges the brain and the uh, nerve cells with electrical energy for better balance between the voluntary and auto autotomic nervous systems. <clears throat> now you may not know what all this means, but we know we need this to live and to be healthy. And so, just take God at his word and exercise. Exercise helps lose excess fat. You know, I was once told, um, the pain of exercise is fat crying. <laughs> <laughs> Maintain a healthy weight, and you have to be active to do that. And so... Maintaining a healthy weight, let's look at your BMI for a second, the body mass index. <clears throat> that same study was talking about COVID and vitamin D. Those who had a higher body mass, a higher BMI, succumb or came to COVID at a higher rate than those who had a, a normal BMI. So all, uh, proper body weight, all this is important. 
Exercise helps digestion and promotes intestinal activity, thus reducing gas and constipation. Physical activities promote a restful sleep. Ecclesiastes 5.12 tells us, The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. Sedentary. Sedentary. No. Oh, a sedentary person? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The person that's sedentary and then overeats. <clears throat> For further study on exercise, there's the following verses. All right, let's look at godly trust. Remember that ultimately, if our full trust is in God, we will do things his way, Amen. no matter the consequences. Consider Daniel. He knew not that his refusal to eat the king's delicacies would result in his death. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile his body. When the eunuch had proved him and his friends after 10 days, his complexion was fairer and fatter than all his companions. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone wanted that for further study. Thank you. And then get this, uh, we're talking about Daniel again. Um, God not only made their physical complexion uh, one more beautiful and more healthy, more vibrant, but he made him 10 times wiser than all the wise men of the realm. There is a divine formula. The closer and more faithfully we obey God by faith in his son, Jesus Christ, the closer we approach the divine symmetry, Sister White says, that has been lost through sin. So the beautiful thing about God's health plan is it's both restorative and it will give us optimum health. And then when we're there, that we couldn't be possibly more healthy, it will maintain that health. All right, let's look, uh, it, you know, under this whole uh, heading of God's uh, godly trust, let's look at some of God's promises and his prerogatives. It is God only that heals. We're told um, in Exodus 15, 26, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Mm -hmm. And I want to point out, because we, we, we know the promises of God, but all God's promises are conditional. Notice it starts, if. If thou wilt. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, go back just a second. <clears throat> When it talks about the Egyptians, <clears throat> about 12 years ago, paleopathologists exhumed or dug up 100,000 Egyptian mummies, and they ran DNA tests on them. And what they found is that they died of the Egyptians, way back there 4,000 plus years ago, died of cancer, arthritis, heart disease, gout, the exact same thing we are dying from today. So there's nothing new under the sun, but God is trying to help us avoid those diseases of the Egyptians. All right, let's look at another prerogative of God. Um, well, actually, this text actually just speaks about trusting in him and why that's important. And everybody knows this particular text. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. But do you know at the end of that passage, he gives a promise? Mm -hmm. In verse 8, it says, It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. If we will trust God, he is promised health. All right. If we cooperate with God, 
we become a fruitful plant. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Isn't that beautiful? Especially when we think of yielding the fruits of the spirit. This is God's ideal process. And we're going to use the example here of what Moses said to the children of Israel about, about why God had chosen a diet of manna for the children of Israel. He said, he fed thee uh, in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not. We never heard of manna before until that time. And this is why he chose their diet that he might humble thee, that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. Does not God want to choose our diet in this day and this time as we travel to the heavenly Canaan? Because he wants to do these same things for us. He's promised that it will keep us humble. He's saying that it will prove us. Are we going to be faithful to obey his voice and not the voice of another? And he's promised that it will do us good at the latter end. There's a time coming that we will not be able to buy or sell. We will subsist only on what God has provided, which he said will be bread and water. If we're not in good health, he will have to lay us to rest because we could not make it through the time of trouble. He has a plan for us, a divine plan for the saving of our souls. In keeping it simple and the humble, like humble foods, I was just learning recently that when you eat um, poorly, uh, the food addiction is a true addiction that you actually go through withdraws like a detoxification from bad food where you find the need to have to continually eat that food just as if it were a drug. Exactly. So if you have like simple, clean food, you're not going to have to deal with it. Exactly, exactly. So a lot of these processed foods have in a lot of chemical compositions because they often put sugar, fat, um, salt in there, which react in our brain. And as Patty Joe said, these things cause us to crave those same terrible foods over and over again. But when we eat the way God has called us to eat, there's no cravings. We're full. We're satiated. And so there's no need to keep eating. He has called us to a simple life, country living, simple, simple whole plant foods for the purpose of humbling us, proving us, and ultimately blessing us at our latter end. What a wonderful promise. Finding rest in stress. Remember, we're still talking about uh, Dr. Godly Trust. Come unto me, all that ye labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So why are we stressed? We, we don't want to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. As some people like to say, I'm too, too blessed to be stressed. Mm -hmm. And really, um, stress is healthy. To a certain point but beyond that when it becomes distress then you're not trusting God mm -hmm. self wants the outcome to be a certain way instead of thy will be done take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light amen Peace I live with you, my peace I give you, not as the world give do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor let it be fearful. You know, in Matthew, Jesus says that there's a time coming when men's hearts will fail them for fear of that which is coming upon the world. So it's best now to learn to trust God with our little problems. Because to him, that's all they really are, little problems designed to test us. You know, in the Old Testament, children of Israel were tested every turn. And it's the same thing for us today. We have a different test 
but we are being tested to see if we're going to choose and follow man in the world or whether we're going to choose and follow God in his ways. So, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your strength, but will, with the temptation, will also provide the way of escape. Now, you have to be in tune with God to understand or to discern that way of escape. When you hear that still small voice behind you, and that's why diet is so important. And some of our health lectures that you've heard us talk about, we talk about how certain foods destroys uh, spiritual perception. And so God wants to clean up our frontal lobes that ye may be able to endure it, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. So, let's talk about the therapeutic value and application of Dr. Godly Trust. Here's the frontal lobe I just mentioned earlier. This part of the brain right here. It's been scientifically proven. It's the seed of spirituality, morality, and your will. That little piece in the brain that God put in to give you the ability to choose right from wrong, which separates us from the, any other creature that God has created. <clears throat> Whoever controls your frontal lobe controls your destiny. And that's why God has given us these health plans, his health plan. So, <clears throat> a song of degrees, in my distress I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. So if you're stressed beyond what you think you can endure, we just read 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he will make an, the way of escape. But you have to be Revelation 14, 12. And here are the patience of the saints. God knows how much you can endure. You and I don't feel like we can endure it a, a moment longer, but God does. And when God has turned up the fire hot enough to consume the dross of our character, then he'll make the way of escape. Mm -hmm. If you try to work it out yourself, as many of us have in the past, including myself, we just make a, a more mess out of it. It's true. So trust God, cry out to him, and be patient. <clears throat> the relationship that exists between the mind and the body is very intimate. When one is affected, the other sympathizes. So <clears throat> you have to protect both. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit further in the presentation of, about the mind and, and the body. So, trusting in God or not trusting in God increases your heart rate, increases your breathing. Blood vessels constrict. Blood fat increases. It weakens your immune system. Digestion stops. More nutrients used up. Less waste removed out of your body. So when you're stressed, all this is going on inside your body. That's why we have to trust. <laughs> That's why we have to trust the Lord. So. Did you know stress shuts down your digestive system? Yeah. <clears throat> when I'm eating, I, I just like to be, you know, bring me pleasant words or don't come talk to me at all. That's, that's why uh, Sister White said that if you're upset or mm -hmm. if you're in a rush, you should not eat. Shouldn't eat. Because that's only causing you harm. That food is going to sit on your stomach and begin to rot, then putrefy. And then all sorts of toxic. all sorts of problems are going to happen. So, <clears throat> don't fight like do cats and dogs at the table. That's the one time you call time out and enjoy a meal together. So, stress lowers uh, potassium and calcium. Those are the two of the big three. You know, magnesium, potassium, and calcium regulates all the other minerals in your body. All right. So when you're stressed, you're lowering potassium and you're lowering calcium. 
The adrenals, stressed out adrenals, produce toxic hormones, thus suppressing the immune system. Okay? So I'm working with cancer patients, and they have stressors around them. They have to be removed from that situation, or the stressors have to be removed. Because you're fighting an uphill battle if you don't do that. And sometimes that stressor is a spouse. <laughs> so, emotional stress and disturbances can cause practically any disease, including arthritis, ulcers, cancer, high and low blood pressure, constipation, asthma, diabetes, angina, glandular disturbances, strokes, etc. So, remember, stress increases blood fat. So you can see, if, if you take a look at each one of these and relate it to what we just read earlier, you can see how you're setting yourself up for these diseases. Trust in divine power. I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? No. God says he has a thousand ways to bring to pass. We just don't trust as we should. Doctor Nutrition. So this is one of our longer ones. Let's see if we can get through it uh, before we break. The best food for the human organism is what God gave us. And he gave that to us in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29. And do anybody know what they were? Okay, so he actually gave vegetables after sin, but thank you. Vegetables were, give, were initially given to the beast of the field, but in Genesis 3.18, after sin had entered, God said, you're going to need vegetables as well. So he gave us vegetables after sin entered. Here's Genesis 1.29. Sorry, you want to say something? It's trying to purify us. Thank you. Thank you. Also, the other reason I think Rick and I mentioned last time is that um, in order to properly uptake vitamins, you have to have minerals. To ha for, for minerals, you... Trace minerals. Trace minerals. <laughs> and trace <clears throat> minerals, you need your digestive enzymes and everything working. So it's all almost like symbiotic. You need all these things working in your body. So thank you. I like the, the mm -hmm. chlorophyll and the purification that you know, chlorophyll does. And also there's certain vegetables like the cruciferous family. Um, that turn off diseases. That, that turn off diseases. There's broccoli that prevents certain cancers from even forming yeah so god put a lot of restorative powers in in his vegetables all right so that's the edenic diet genesis 129 and then after sin entered we had genesis 318 all right let's let's look at this here's some points um, i want to make on the biblical conditions for requiring I mean, sorry, requirements for eating flesh foods. So God only gave permission to eat flesh foods when? After the flood. After the flood. So almost 2,000 years after man was created. The animals that are permissible as food were all designated as clean animals. That's according to Genesis 7, 2. Uh, Genesis 8, 20. Exodus 11, the whole chapter. And Deuteronomy 15. Now, another point is God permitted flesh eating to do what? To shorten the lifespan of man. And that is according to Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. And it's also found very definitively, Ellen White writes on this, on, in Councils and Diets and Foods, page 373, verse 3. She said, God permitted them to eat flesh to shorten their sinful lives. 
Prior to the flood, and we'll look at a table here shortly, but prior to the flood, you had men living almost a thousand years. After f um, flesh foods, just about 10 generations in, after eating flesh, it had shortened to less than half. All right? Man was never permitted to consume flesh with the blood in it. And that's both in um, the Old and New Testament. You, you can see the um, references. references up there. The Bible calls consumption of meat with blood in it a sin. That's according to 1 Samuel 14, 32 to 34. It's not just a Jewish thing. God said it was never to be consumed. I just gave, uh, pointed out the references there. Acts 15, 20, 29, and 21 tells the Gentiles who are coming into the church, don't eat it with blood. He didn't say don't eat it, but he said don't eat it with blood. It's a sin. It was always a sin. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes, there are other requirements. I don't have it in here, I think, but I do have that elsewhere. It says, when God called Israel out of Egypt, he gave them what kind of diet? It was a plant-based diet. There was no flesh in it. God's purpose in providing Israel with such a simple diet was to prove them, humble them, and bless them in their latter end. And consider this. In the sanctuary service, flesh food was eaten in the courtyard and in the holy place. But in the most holy place, what kind of foods are found? Manna, almonds, the pomegranate, right? Grain, fruits, nuts. Same as uh, my brother over here pointed out we had in the beginning. And the, that is according to Exodus 28, 34, Numbers 17, 8, and Hebrews 9, 3, and 4. Oh, here's my slide that I was talking about. So here's the other guidelines for eating flesh foods. No animal was to be eaten that had died of itself. Please note the references. If you'd like, take a picture of that. The animals were set apart, possibly purged, and ate bitter herbs. Also references there. It was killed in a loving way. Do you notice that the, the animals that were slaughtered at sacrifice, they couldn't be jumping and running or have any kind of blemishes. They, they had to die the way Christ, that he laid down his life. And so they weren't, I don't know if you've ever watched the slaughter of an animal, but I had the unfortunate, um, my father raised cattle and we had neighbors that raised cattle and I've watched them kill them. It is not pretty. The animal is fighting. They had to tie it, you know, neck, several ropes around the neck, several around the body to keep it still. And it still was fighting with all it could to save itself. Imagine the adrenaline and rush that was happening to that poor animal as it was slaughtered. Going into the meat. And yeah, it went into the meat and, and multiple shots to the animal's head before it would die. So it's, it's uh, you know, God didn't intend this for us. Yes. Uh, we're entering what people call the Christmas season, and, and when we look at that and we study Nome, um, Nimrod, mm -hmm. I.D. Hunter. Right. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. Thank you. Good connection. Um, the blood had to be drained. It could not be consumed. God said the life of the flesh is in the blood. We weren't supposed to ever partake of it. Do you notice that in the occult and satanic rituals, they consume blood? The fat must be removed. It has to be, it could not be eaten, sorry. And then uh, it, it was not uh, to be consumed after three days. All right, here is, my chart is kind of off here, but um, mm -hmm. this chart showed everyone before the flood from Adam uh, to, his, to Noah's father, Lamech, and then it showed um, after the flood. I didn't put Noah in because Noah lived, lived two-thirds of his life um, before and then just a third of his life after. Um, but Shem all the way down to Abraham's father. T uh, t what's his name again? T Tabor. Uh, Abraham's okay. father? Abraham's father was... Terah. 
Tara, thank you. I don't know why I was. <laughs> okay. Um, you, you would see that there, the lifespan was cut in half when you average that out. Let's uh, consider also where we're headed. Like I said, uh, God showed us that we are spiritual Israel. We're going through the wilderness of sin at this point, right? And we're headed for the heavenly Canaan. Here is what we are told we're going to eat in the heavenly Canaan. Isaiah 65, 21, 22 says, And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. And so, again, you, you see plant-based foods, right? This was John's vision. Revelation 22, 1 to 2. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, were the tree, uh, sorry, was the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look now at the therapeutic value and applications of Dr. Nutrition. Is this a coincidence? The only food categories not linked to any major diseases is the diet God gave in Genesis, and it's the translation diet at the end of time. Mm -mm. Oh. But, oh, there is a mistake there. Anyway, we're going to move on to Dr. Healthy Air. We can live longer without food than without air, which is the food that God has provided for the lungs. So, Dr. Healthy Fresh Air. 80% comes from the atmosphere. It is more than just nitrogen and oxygen that the body takes from the air. A vast amount of trace minerals exist in the atmosphere due to the cleansing action of the oceans of the world. These are in, par are in parts per billion and smaller. So when we get out there in that fresh air and exercise, we're breathing in trace minerals. <clears throat> God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so. I think this is your part. God supplies this gracious gift. God has made the world and all the things therein. He giveth to all life and breath to all things. Amen. <clears throat> yeah. She, amen. She said you can't help but love God. Amen. <laughs> The lungs are constantly throwing off impurities and they need to be constantly supplied with fresh air. Impure air does not afford the necessary supply of oxygen and the blood passes to the brain and other organs without being vitalized. <clears throat> Hence the necessity of uh, air passing through ventilation to live in closed rooms and bedrooms where the air is dead and, and Vitali 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 weakens the entire system. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you always keep your rooms to your house, the windows and doors closed, you're not getting the proper oxygen to vitalize the lungs, which sends that vitalized blood throughout your body. And another thing, there's two different types of air, negative ions and positive ions. Human tissue requires negative ions. When you're in your house with the dryer running, it's putting off positive ions. That's why if you stay in the laundry room any length of time, you start getting tired and drowsy. You go sit by a brook or the river or the ocean and the waves are crashing or the brook is bubbling. That's producing positive ions. I mean negative, excuse me. Negative. I, that was a test. <laughs> I see two people jumped on it right away. Amen. <laughs> 
This crowd is awake. <laughs> <laughs> producing negative ions. That's why when you're sitting there next to that water, you all of a sudden you just wake up and you get energetic. And After a rainstorm. Yeah, too, too exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's jump in here on the gift of light. God gave us the sun. And of course, he also gave us the moon and stars. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And what did God think of them? He said it was good. good. Truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Now let's look at how uh, healthful the sun is. <clears throat> Sunlight changes, as I said earlier, cholesterol into vitamin D. Very important for your health. <clears throat> and the lighter the pigmentation is, the easier it is to absorb into the body. Uh, for people with darker pigment, uh, your palms of your hands, the soles of your feet, um, the cheeks and other private sensitive parts like the buttocks will absorb the sunlight uh, very, very readily. I think we have, so the body, the daily requirements is 400 units of, of I, uh, vitamin D a day, which is 15 minutes daily on the face, hands to meet the daily requirement. So just 15 minutes of your time. Sunlight stimulates the liver in all of its functions. Did you know that the liver uh, produces over 100,000 enzymes a day? Nothing, almost everything in your body requires an enzyme. From the sole of your feet to the top of your head requires enzymes. All right? <clears throat> the body is on uh, a 24-hour circadian rhythm, which, is, which really operates all these functions of your body. The liver resets between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. every morning. So for you workaholics that are up midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, your, body's, your liver is not resetting. So that day's job is not going to be as efficient as it could have been if you had to went to bed before midnight. So sunlight increases white blood cell counts, you know, your immune system, the white blood cells. And it strengthens NK, or natural killer cells, of the uh, immune system. So just that sunlight in the morning. Sunlight helps prevent infection and kills germs. We have a presentation where we talk about sunlight and how a doctor up in the state of Washington, wasn't it? Yeah. He did tests on window sills of uh, uh, patients um, bedroom window sills, and what he found is that that sunlight penetrated and killed those viruses and those bacteria, the same ones the patients were suffering from. Even on a cloudy day, the UV rays will do that. It's very important to open the blinds. I know my mother's generation, they had those big heavy draperies and clothes because they didn't want the couch to fade, they didn't want the rug to fade. But they were de depriving us of the sunlight we needed. Yes. So I think it was a, a dentist hospital that, that flew in uh, 1918 that they had some people that were really bad cases and they had no room for them and they put them outside and they recovered. Mm. You know, are you familiar with that story? I heard. <clears throat> I, I've heard of it, but, and also at Battle Creek, um, they had a room where they put sick people like a sunroom. and it was like a sunroom and in the summertime they could take the glass out and uh, they got some wonderful Dr. Kellogg got some wonderful results by doing that so it is thought that energy from the sun stimulates the pineal gland to produce melatonin a powerful antioxidant did you know that melatonin is, is even more powerful than glutathione so early in the morning you have to get outside and get the sun rays into the pineal gland, into your eyes that travels up to the pineal gland. Also, we just learned this recently, that at night, if you're up past 9 p.m., any light shuts off the, 
the production of melatonin. Any light, even light through your eyelids when you're trying to sleep. So that's why back in Sister White's day, they, they didn't have the lights. They didn't have man-made lights. And so in the research that this gentleman who we were listening to recently said that uh, after 9 o'clock, if you got lights on, melatonin stops, shuts it down. And he was all, go to bed sorry. Pardon? He, he was pretty much That's what he that. was saying. Um, yeah. The one thing I thought was really interesting, he also, thought, he also talked about some research that had been done with some blind individuals and how their immune system was much higher than most other people. And it, one of the main reasons was because um, they didn't have the disturbances of, of light, per se, uh, at night, because obviously they, they, they're blind. And he was talking about that. I, I found that to be quite yeah. interesting. Yeah. In that um, reverse of that, so then the blind people aren't able to get the benefit of the penile gland producing the melatonin. So it's probably that. Well, remember, if the light is penetrating the eyelids, yes, they are. Even if they can't see. In the see daytime. It. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, not the, the uh, optic. Not optic, that's what I'm looking for, nerve, it plays a different role than the stimulation of the pineal gland. So that's why I said earlier, if you're in bedroom and you got lights on and it's penetrating your eyelids, it's going to cut off that melatonin production. A blind person, if that light, the sunlight or near infrared light can penetrate their eyelids, they will still get the benefit from it. Yeah, it is very yeah, interesting. I, I actually want, because he mentioned it, I want to look into it some more yeah. because I thought it was quite interesting. And these are all God's information to Sister White's writings that science has verified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we have this on what's up. Oh, no. On, on, it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. We'll, yeah, anybody it, wants guys. information, it's we'll share Adventist it with you. Adventist. He did, he did a study on COVID-19 back when COVID was really raging. And give a lot of information. Yes, sir. In blindness, you don't have to go into it, but in blindness, is the problem the brain or the problem the eyes? It could be both. Well, you know, there's different hemispheres and regions of the brain. We're talking about the pineal gland. And so that part of the brain may be damaged, but the pineal gland is not. So and we're getting ready to, to, to end right here.